You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. What it is, what's up, and welcome everyone to Faces and Feels, Anything Goes. That's right, it's it's the second episode in this series. I'm hanging out once again with my man, Alex Castillo from Vitals and Violets. How are you, my dude? Good, good to be here again. Excellent. Happy to hang out with you. It's uh, bright and early on a Friday morning here. We we were just laughing about our time differences because it's obviously evening where you are. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to get this cup of coffee. And you're like, yeah, I might crack a beer. And I was like, yeah, (laughs) we're living in two different worlds, right? (laughs) Right I go for 7 a.m. beer. So (laughs) I mean, some days I can if it's like the weekend, not a work day. Then then yeah, sure. Depends on what kind of work day I want to have. Well, this is is also valid. uh, uh, Sometimes you got to roll the dice. Absolutely. So uh, if this is sounding different at all, I apologize to anybody, but all my stuff is still out from recording all the dude wears my ring commentary last night and I couldn't be bothered piling it all back into my desk. So I'm kind of on a couch and I've got a mic loose, so there might be a little bit of noise, but hey, the idea of the show is to be more laid back. But Alex and I wanted to catch up. We just watched the Tournament of Survival weekend last week. So it was Tournament of Survival 9. And then the Cage of Death event. And so, yeah, we just kind of wanted to break down Tournament of Survival a little bit, talk some shit, maybe talk some music we're into, whatever whatever bullshit we're doing. Um, So how were you feeling about the event, my man? Like, you have fun with TOS? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was was great. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have some issues with some of the booking, but, hey, I'm not not the booker, so what, what can I do? Well, that's exactly right. It's also like there's been such good tournament and survivals in the past that it can sometimes be hard to compete with them. You know what I mean? Like the, my favorite is the tournament survival 666 uh, is like my favorite one. And, um, which if I remember correctly, that's the final with, uh, Koga and Cologne. And that was just unbelievable. Like it was so crazy. And so this was, this was quite a good lineup here. Um, and then there was some, you know, bits and pieces, you know, like a four way and stuff in there to, to build some time. So it's, it kicked off with Yuki Ishikawa versus Ultra Mantis Black. Now, uh, Ishikawa, I've seen live a few times when we've been in Japan, my wife and I. Um, and I remember, I swear, I saw one of his like first death matches, hey, because the very first time I saw this dude, he was like not a scar to be had, looking like a little baby. You know what I mean? Like, and then the next, I swear, it was it seemed like this fast. Like I saw him, I'm like, oh yeah, it's his first cut of death battery. He's getting into it nice and early. And then the next time I saw him, he was holding the the championship belt. You know, <laughs> like, and I was like, oh fuck, that escalated quickly. I'm not super familiar with some of the Japanese talent unless they're like a real big name because I don't really get a chance to watch too much of the product over there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, obviously the the big names over there that have been over here before I know, but he was awesome. I liked him a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope to see him more. Mm-hmm. So, Were you familiar with Ultramantis Black? I hadn't seen him before. I think he's like Chikara and stuff like that, but yeah. I thought his look was really cool. I've seen him wrestle live once. I don't know too much about him. I know he's a big deal because, you know, when, when they announced him, I saw the internet blowing up about it. I wish I knew more because he's awesome. And I've seen him wrestle with the H2O Center once for some, I can't even remember what show it was, some random show, but he's cool. I like him. Yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. He was giving me kind of like a, was it like, you know, like the boogeyman, Dr. Voodoo, yeah. like sort of vibes about him. Um, was obviously in great shape and and like they kicked off the night. They were throwing around some glass and stuff. It was really fun. Um then after after that, obviously Yuki gets the win, um, and then after that, it's it, how do I say his name? Hideyoshi Kamatani um, versus Big F and Joe. Now Kamatani, I've also seen in Japan um, before as well, 
and I I hadn't thought sort of too much of him then, you know what I mean? But throughout this tournament, he really sort of won me over. Like as it went, like how did how did you find him? Because I he you know presents a little bit you know plainer I guess than somebody like Yuki, but he's a fucking good worker. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to take anything away from him in that aspect, but I think I might be a little biased because I'm a huge big big F and Joe fan. Yeah, but sure, that match was weird to me. It seemed like it seemed like a lot of spots seemed rushed and not planned out i guess when there's a language barrier it is kind of hard yeah. to uh i mean i mean there was talk it, about there was a bit of that with ultra mantis as well and so True. and so i think that is that can come down i thought joe and uh joe in his match they were better i th- i th- mm. like their chemistry they seemed just went a bit better yeah they went harder absolutely and i mean joe's pretty fucking experienced um and it's always great yeah. to see him do anything. Like the crowd just eat him up. But yeah, with these initial kind of, you know, Japanese workers with Western workers kind of thing, there what you can see there was a little bit of clunkiness, and I'm sure that comes down to nerves of being on TOS, new country, screaming crowd, like just all of yeah. those those kind of things. You know, I think it was a personality clash too, where you know. What's his name? Oh, man, what's his name? I can't remember. Sorry. Um, uh, Japanese the, talent guy. Uh, Kamatani. Um, he was very straightforward, and Joe was a showman. Yeah. You know, he is very comical. And that, that that's uh, what I thought about him too, because he doesn't really present like a gimmick or anything. He's just like a dude in jeans. Uh, you, don't, yeah. you, you don't really have something immediately to grab onto. You know, you see Yuki, and he's got, you know, the, the red shoes on, and he's kind of got the you know, the cool shorts and he's got like a look to him, you know, and then Ultra Mantis is this supernatural looking figure and Joe's this magnet of charisma and fucking, you yeah. know, and loudness. And then, you know, Kamatani's a little bit more quiet, but you go on like throughout this tournament when he wrestles again, especially when him and Yuki get in the ring together, you really, mm. you really sort of see what he can do then um, because obviously then he's in his element, you know. Right. But, but, yeah, it was really good. I was actually, though I enjoyed him, I was really disappointed to not see Big F and Joe go deeper. I like it. Me uh, too. I had a little bit of an issue with some of the spots, and like with, with some no selling. I saw a lot of people talking about that online too. I don't know. I don't feel like any any of the giant structures should be no sold. I feel like they should be special. But, sure. you know, right from the get-go, I think there was like a massive like bundle of tubes that Joe bashed over him and he just stood there and was – I get it. it. It's a badass moment, but still, like, that's a pretty big structure to just no sell. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. I did like. <laughs> I did like that it was like House of Horrors death match. I should have said that in the first one. The first one was a House of Horrors death match. Yeah. The second one was swinging for the fences. I always like these tournaments when they have themed matches. Yeah, and, me too. And like I when agree. I talk about tournament of survival six six six, it was really like that, and the matches even the stipulations were so different in that one. This one, there was mm. still some of the same elements overlapped, you know, but we, I, I think the tournaments are the best when it's like, this match is only these things and that's all it can yeah. be, you know? And then then by the time you get to the, the final match and then everything's involved, you know, it escalates as it goes. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Big effort, Joe takes a loss, which I was spewing about, but um, Kamatani is going to do some good work later as we go. Next up, I, I got to say that I think Brandon Kirk was the MVP of this tournament for me. I thought he was awesome with everybody and Shunma Katsumata from DDT. Um, we had, we've seen him a couple of times in DDT in Japan and the most recent time we went to this random DDT show. We didn't even know where the fucking venue was. Like we lapped the building about three times. It was so low key. Literally the only reason we found the venue is we saw fucking Yoshi Tatsu walk out the front. <laughs> he was walking out <laughs> nice. for a smoke or something. I don't know what he was doing, but he was just walking around looking lost. And then we're like, maybe that's it. And then once we were in, not a sign outside, then once we were in the lobby of this like hotel type thing, then we started to see, you know, the DDT, DDT standees and stuff. But Shunma was on that, and he had a death match on that show. 
And our friends were with us were like, aren't really into the deathmatch stuff. And they're like, I thought we weren't watching this kind of stuff this time. We're like, what can we tell you? We didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he was great. And my friend, Chris, ended up buying his shirt. Um, and then, yeah, I didn't know he was going to be in TOS. So it was really cool to see him and Brandon Kirk. And, and I think this may have been one of the best matches of the tournament. How did you feel about it? That was probably my second favorite match of the tournament. Yeah. And it's only because uh, Kirk and um, Murdoch in the second round mm-hmm. was my favorite. Yeah, sure. But they're great. Together. Anything Kirk, anything Kirk does, I'm a fan of. He's just so fucking good, and he and he, he can get it out of anybody. Like no matter who yeah. his opponent is, he always delivers. You know, like yeah, I mean, he put on a banger with Microman uh, the last time I was I, I was there with whatever those last shows were. Yeah, I mean. He's just like a wrestler's wrestler, a trainer. Uh, like he just gets it, you know. And I'd really mm-hmm. love to see more for from him. What do you think that Brandon Kirk needs to do to step into the next level? Because he sort of he always ends up plateauing, no matter where he goes. I mean, don't get me wrong; he did, you know, get to the championship, and they had a great uh, angle in ICW No Holds Barred, you know, with. Cruel and with Casey and with him and then him getting the title and and all that kind of stuff. But even then, I feel like he hasn't even reached his peak, you know. Yeah. Um. And I feel like he ends up plateauing. So what would what would you like to see from him? Do you think, or do you think the key ingredient would be for him to step to that next level? I think I think what he's doing right now, just letting the crowd carry him, because he is just the crowd is behind him. You could tell during that whole event. He needs to ride this momentum mm-hmm. uh, that he's got just from the fans being behind him because it was incredible to see like the standing ovation like twice for Brandon Kirk in one event. Like, yeah, the man deserved it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think if I think if he keeps going out there and putting on these types of matches, and maybe even getting him in a scramble or something like that, just to show off the fact that he doesn't need death match, he can do anything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's incredible at it. Um. Yeah, he shouldn't have a problem getting a title. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I would like to see from him is yeah. I'd like to see because he can really talk as well, you know. Yeah. I'd like to see a turn from him because he's not really a, a face or a heel here, but like he always is, you know, the rogue Brandon Kirk, but really what does that even mean? You know what I mean? Mm. I'd like to see like a bit of a gimmick focus and I feel like if that if he had something, you know what I mean, just a bit of a an edge and a, a new moniker and maybe, you know, slightly different gear and stuff like that, it could absolutely just jank him to that next level. Whereas, you know, like it's fun to come out to Mar- Mariah Carey and it's fun to do stuff with Casey and I think the world of her, she knows that. I've had them both on my show. Um, mm-hmm. But if he was to do something just for himself, you know what I mean? And a bit of a thing. You could absolutely just see him turn that corner, you know, into oh, yeah. the next thing and be the top guy in deathmatch because he's easily one of the best, if not the best workers. But, I yeah, agree. I feel like he is a bit that kind of like straight lace, like just Brandon Kirk thing where it's like if he just had something, I don't know what that thing is. Only he would know what that thing is, you know, or find what that thing is. He could be something. Well, that helped him, in, it helped him in ICW because at first he was like the – the, the heel of ICW. Yeah. And then, you know, crowd started slowly, slowly turning to be in, in his favor. So yeah, I did. I did love that stuff. Like in ICW, because like the, the story they were always telling in ICW is that eventually the title corrupts, right? It was almost like mm-hmm. anybody that got the title would then eventually turn evil. Like every single <laughs> person that held it, like John Wayne Murdoch was at the top of that company for ages until he got the title, they invented the title, you know, he gets that and then he immediately starts to fucking go downhill, you know? And then like Casey gets it and she fucking overcomes everybody, but then she's immediately fucking terrible. Like the second she's fucking the champion, she immediately starts to go downhill. And then Brandon's like, I need to take that title off you. Even if I fucking have to beat up my own wife, because you can't be this person. And then he immediately fucking goes, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like like power corrupts and I love that kind of story in wrestling. But, yeah, I think, think that little edge, I just want so much for him and I just can't 
talk about how much I enjoy his matches, and I just think there's there's something else there for him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then after that, obviously, we had the um, Tour de Survival. But, but, but what did they call it? Oh, the, this one didn't have a stipulation. It was just a death match. The other one was a DDT death match, hence all the chickens. It was John Main, Wayne Murdoch versus a mystery opponent, which, if I remember correctly, doesn't Jimmy Lloyd comes out and says it's going to be him or something, and then then Slade comes out. Is that was that the order? Broski Jimmy. Broski Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Ridiculous. <laughs> Two different people. Yeah. Bro, sorry, my, my apologies. Broski Jimmy comes out, the Prince of the Death badge. <laughs> uh, but then Slade comes out. Great to see the return of Slade absolutely spewing. He didn't get past this round, though. That man is a menace, man. Yeah. <laughs> Everything about him I love. I love him, too. And he's been gone for so long. I just wanted him to mow straight through. Like, you know, John Wayne is a great wrestler, and obviously what happens in this tournament is going to happen. But, like, I just wanted Slade way deeper. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I get it, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe he's <laughs> I like, know. I don't want to wrestle in three fucking death matches tonight. You know what I mean? Like, that yeah, may... just, just destroy me in one and I'm good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, he didn't even get destroyed, really, like, because he, he he lost strong. You know, he got beaten, but he just walked out under his own steam. He wasn't, he didn't even look phased, like, from the thing. Yeah, I don't know, his back was disgusting, though. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah. I mean, he took, like, so many tubes to the back at one point. Like, yeah. Back to back to back to back. And it was just, like, raw hamburger meat when he was walking out. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. It's so gross. <laughs> it's brutal. He's an absolute beast. And I'm glad he's back and want to definitely see more from him. Yeah, I hope he's back. I hope it wasn't just a one-time thing. I'd love to see that dude more. Yeah, exactly. He's a he's a murderer, hey? It's absolutely brutal. Now, I, I haven't been up on my GCW I sort of fell off for a while. And right. so I then the four match happens and it is four way match. It's Cole Radrick versus Alec Price versus Jordan Oliver versus Marcus Mathis. Now, mm -hmm. for me, two of these guys are like Alec Price, I think the world of. I think he's mm -hmm. an unbelievably huge star. Uh, Marcus Mathers is going to be something amazing but then the other two don't really hit for me and i don't really like this garbage daddies kind of team here with cole and alec what's going on there you're up to date right you tell me what this um, friendship is yeah bit. i don't know um i like their chemistry in, in their in the ring when they're doing tag teams but i don't understand the need to be a tag team no um maybe they just want to do I that don't maybe understand the, i also don't understand why like that was a fatal four away. Well, they could have just made it a tag team match, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, um, exactly. Cause it was for the most part, except for a few spots where they were all fighting. But for the most part, it was just tag team spots. Yeah. Was it for that ring side. thing that Cole is carrying around? Like, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he won that er like a while ago. Yeah. I don't watch every GCW show. I only sure. kind of like really keep up with it on, on Twitter uh -huh. Um, unless I'm watching with some friends or if, unless it's a big event. Mm -hmm. So I don't watch everything. So I'm not super familiar with that, but I don't think he wanted in that one. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. Anyway, that yeah. comes into play later in the weekend, but not as much as he would have liked. Uh, so yeah, but Alec Price, man, his moveset is crazy. He's fucking yeah. something real, real special. Jordan Oliver's never really hit for me personally. Like I don't, really see it and and that may just be like mediocre excellence like i use that term a bit where it's like he's always good and he's always there and he's always consistent but then there's never really been anything storyline -y or gimmicky or anything like that that's jumped out to me about him and then marcus about this i could just see nothing but but fucking bright lights for him he's come so far and he's so young yeah that's my guy right there yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the few right. people in the business that I'm actually like I consider a friend because, sure, you know he's he, yeah he's just my guy. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, you didn't you guys do like a collaboration sticker or shirt or something like that? Yeah, as as violent? I um, sponsored his second show, the All, Marcus Mathers All I Want, and I wound up just making a just a random t-shirt design for the show. Yeah, and, cool. Uh, it was cool. Yeah, exactly. But, I like the. The Vitals and Violets uh, collab shirts that you've done. I've actually got the Reed Bentley one in the Yeah, that the was room. the first one. I want to do more, but 
Uh, they'll come. They'll come eventually. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. just time and, you know, the right guys because you want to team with the people that you, you know, you dig and. Yeah, there's also just so many like these little brands out there and everybody's kind of attached themselves to others. And that's, that's awesome. But I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, use this guy if he's got, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to step on anyone's (laughs) toes or or anything like that. Would be sick to see like, you know, vitals and violence, you know, knee pad on a dude or or something like that, you know, some kind of sponsor thing, but you just have to see, yeah, see where it goes. And you also don't just want to be spending money just to spend money. <laughs> like, you know, like it's got to be like a friend or a mutual sort of promotion thing or something like that. Yeah. I like, I like um, dealing with like the really small talent, like, you yeah. know, the guys that are just like there's H2O kids. They're all awesome. I'd like to work with any, anybody there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. We talked yeah. about on the last show, that's kind of your, Go to promotion, right? It's nice and close yes. to you, and you, you get in. And I wouldn't say nice and close, but it is the closest. <laughs> how 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 long does it take you to drive that to H two O? About two and a half hours. Oh, okay. Fuck, I didn't realize it was quite <laughs> quite that bit. Yeah, I mean that's not crazy, but it is. It is a bit of a trek if you're going to go out there after work or whatever. Yeah, it feels like it's right around the corner at this point. I guess so much, but yeah. it's not the best drive after the show in the middle of the night. Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. So you usually like. Go with someone, like bring a friend or something. Oh yeah, I I don't go by myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Just for the drive home, I don't, I don't trust that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you fall asleep at the wheel. I'm fucking terrible. Yeah, you, I fall asleep anywhere. You can you know that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, that was well documented. So uh, yeah. after the four way happens, we jump into the second round, made in Japan death match. Uh, Yuki Ishikawa versus Hideyoshi Kamatani. Um, I really enjoyed this. I think this really showcased like what both guys do. They're obviously in their element, familiar with each other, and I'm glad that they – I had thought, like, as it jumped in the second round, I'm like, oh, that's a shame that the two Japanese guys are versing each other and, you know, they will have done that in other promotions and stuff before, and then John Wayne and Brandon Kirk are against each other. We've seen that before. But it really, in a way, was sort of smart booking because you were guaranteed to get the best out of all four. Because they're because mm-hmm. they are working with you know, in the same languages and people they're familiar with, don't you think? I was kind of like, oh, I'd love to see Brandon Kirk versus Ishikawa, or either well either guy really. But you're gonna get the best out of them together and the best out of John Wayne and Brandon Kirk together. Yeah, me and my friend Justin, we were watching this together. Uh, I watched the rerun with him, and we were saying the same thing. We were wondering why. Oh man, they're the Japanese guys are over here why wouldn't they let the American guys get a chance, you know, to mix it up. And then we were like, well, why not let the American uh, fan base over here that doesn't watch Japan get like a a solid Japanese death match out of two stars from over there. And I think they did it right. Absolutely. It's tough. Right. And those are the kind of decisions like as a booker, you've got to make you like, do I go for the like never before seen matchup and hope they kill it? Or do I go with the little bit more proven thing that I know will absolutely deliver a better match? You know. Yeah. Exactly. I think the se- yeah for second rounds, I think I think they went yeah. went the right way. And I think because both matches are so good, it, it's kind of proof of concept. You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, that absolutely worked. Oh but, yeah. But yeah, really enjoyed that. If somebody was wanting to jump in this show and you didn't want to watch a ton of matches, you would just jump in here at the second round. You'd, wa- mm-hmm. you'd watch this Made in Japan death match and then you would watch uh, the Contraptions death match with John Wayne and Brandon Kirk, which was also great and a real good example of what they do really well. Yeah, Brandon Kirk and John Wayne Murdoch was my favourite match of the whole the whole event. Yeah, and that crap was living and dying by both guys. Like I quite a few times thought Brandon was going to pull it out. Me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I was a... Uh, um, John Wayne has done so much that I was kind of spewing because I was like, oh, I would have loved to see Brandon go further. But I, John Wayne's been in GCW for quite some time now. I don't think Brandon has been doing as much with them, so it kind of made yeah. sense that they were going to go with the their guy, I guess. True. I also don't understand Murdoch's, like, constant flipping between being some uber heel and then just being a face the next show over there. It's kind of strange. I, I, that was the vibe that I, I wasn't really – getting from him because it's like he comes out I'm like okay John Wayne Murdoch's a heel but then you bring out like Jimmy 
who's more of a heel, and you're like, okay, now now we okay, we love fucking John Wayne. This is sick. And then Slade comes out, everybody loves Slade, and then like John Wayne's a heel again. And I'm like, what what is he? Like, like yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, am I oh, supposed well. to be happy he we, he won tournament of survival, or am I supposed to be mad about it? That's that's yeah. the, the thing. Because I'm happy he won it because I like him as a wrestler, but I'm like, in the storyline, I don't really know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. And I like Yeah, and the cr- I mean the crowd went berserk when he won and he was, you know, celebrating with the crowd afterwards like a face would. So Yeah, exactly. But then like the next maybe day, for the tournament they were just like yeah. uh, you know, faces and heels out the window. Yeah. We're just gonna wrestle. I don't know. <laughs> but but see, I don't like that. That's a pretty sort of indirific way of fucking dealing yeah. with it. <laughs> and JCW can be a little bit guilty of just going, it doesn't really matter, just make it work. Nobody cares on the day. And they did that heaps on the cages cage show where they're just like, mm. fuck it. Like, you know what I mean? And it all happens and then you're in the building and you're drinking a beer and you don't give a fuck and you're happy to see people and whatever. But I'm like, I like the rules, man. Like I like it to <laughs> make sense and I like the logic to progress. And if you yeah, cut those quarters, it's like, it's fine. Yeah. It's only wrestling. But if you say, yeah, it's only wrestling about everything, then fuck everything is how I feel about it. I feel like there has to be a framework. Like, because if you yeah. don't, if if I'm going to spend my, suspend my disbelief and enter this world where everything is real, then I feel like the rules have to be real too. Otherwise, then the fucking walls start to come down and the fucking paper house falls to pieces. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. It's, I think GCW is really leaning on the, uh, just putting on a fun show and not, it's it's they care about stories so much on one end and then on the other end they just don't care and at some point you're like i don't know what's going on anymore <laughs> yeah and it's like fucking i don't think the the answer to a pothole or when you're in a spot is hit nick gage's music like i don't think that <laughs> i don't think that is a story beat you know what I mean? like it's just like don't who gives a fuck it's nick gage and i'm like yeah that is fucking cool i'm stoked to see him but it, you know what would be better if it was nick gage making sense in the storyline or exploiting yeah, a true. rule or do it not just like he gets to do it because he is nick gage anyway we're talking about the next show so uh <laughs> then we jump to the final Final death match, John Wayne Murdoch defeating Yuki Ishikawa to become the Tournament of Survival Night winner. Can I bring up one thing first? Please. That we just skipped over. Oh, yeah, um, sure. What did we miss? Tremont and Abdullah the Butcher. Their little segment. Did you see that? No, I skipped it myself because at that point I'm like near exhaustion and I've got a wife with me and I'm like, I'm just going to watch the next match. So I have actually been planning to go back. Is it worth watching? What what goes on? What happens? I wouldn't say it's worth watching. It's a little strange, but there's yeah. one point where Abdullah the Butcher tells Tremont that he is the new black Abdullah the Butcher. What? And <laughs> he, that's exactly. He just goes, you're the new black Abdullah the Butcher. And everyone was just kind of like, cool and no one really said anything about it and i'm sitting at home going well, what did he just say what <laughs> Tremont said that to no, abdullah, abdullah, abdullah the butcher said that to Tremont. abdullah the butcher said that the Tremont. like you're the new abdullah the butcher <laughs> but added the word black in there for some yes reason. was some abdullah reason. the butcher known as black abdullah the butcher what was that was abdullah the butcher known as black abdullah the butcher is that his full title i don't no, I don't think so. I don't know what he was going for. It was just so random, but it made me laugh, and I, I can't stop thinking about it. Sometimes it, it plays in my head. <laughs> I just really I wake up in the middle of the night with question marks, like what the fuck? Happened? Yeah, I can't wait to see Tremont at H two O next, so I can be like, what? "Are you you were you're it, man? You're the new Black Abdul the Butcher. You got to live up to it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's weird, but you know some of these guys. So they've taken a few too many chair shots and things like that. They, yeah. They say things. <laughs> taken a few too many substances in their younger days and and synapses are fried. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a moment for sure. Yeah. Good to anyway. you know, sometimes <laughs> you know, you're in public and you're you know, you fucking drop in a word into a sentence that doesn't make sense and you're like, what did I just fucking say? Like <laughs> at plenty of times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, what did you think of the final though? I do think the we always have to have a scaffold in the final. 
yeah, uh, right. <laughs> tradition and all climb up it just for fun. Like, I'm just, we're both going up this cool, like, is a, a little bit lazy for me. Um, I think the only time I've enjoyed a scaffold in a match that sort of made sense for me was, did you see, I did an episode about it back in the day, but did you see Tremont's last match? Uh, against yes. Ricky Shane Page oh, at H two O. Yep, exactly. And that was I did a mini episode about that back when it happened. It's called Thank You Tremont. Um, mm-hmm. And at the time, you know, we thought that was going to be his last match, and it's a it's a match, and it's a you know it's about Danny Havoc, and it's about their friendship and stuff. And there's a point where Tremont does climb a scaffold, but then he gets there and he's like, "Come on, you motherfucker!" Like is essentially daring him to come and face him in this more dangerous environment. Like he's goading him up, you know, and then yeah. he's like, oh, fuck. And then he climbs up and then, you know, what happens, happens. When both guys just sort of like casually climb up it, like at the same time, we're just in agreement we're going to go do this. That always bugs me. I'm like. Yeah, and that happens most of the time. Yeah, like, like we need to be forced or there the needs to like- be an interaction, not just like, oh, we're doing this spot. Cool, let's go. Like that yeah. seems a bit lazy for me. Yeah, there's always like one dude that climbs up and the other guy looks up and goes, well, now I got to go up there. We're like, why? Yeah. Just <laughs> just don't. Just be like, you come yeah, down here, I motherfucker. One, I want one dude to just be like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Come down. Or I want like <laughs> one guy that's below just start pegging chairs up at him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then get angry, like get down. And he's like, no, motherfucker. And he's like throwing shit at him. He goes, or shake the scaffold, shake him off. Yeah, and then he something. can't get him down yeah. and then he's frustrated. So then he climbs it. Like give me a reason that you both end up there. Not just like we got to go do this, lads. Okay, cool. Like that always bugs me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Exactly. Exactly. I try not to let stuff like that bother me because it happens I, all the time. But I, it is true. I know. I mean, again, it's wrestling. I mean, normally I'm only on the at the time. I'm just like whatever. But then in this kind of forum where we're gonna break it down and kind of talk about it a little bit, I gotta air the grievance. Like <laughs> just go. Yeah. These are the nitpicking things. And I will say that the vast majority of stuff that happened in this tournament I really enjoyed. It's just easier to kind of nitpick the things that, that bug you opposed to, like, all the great spots and, and fun things. And the vibe of these shows just looks crazy. And I'm sure once I'm five beers deep and I've been there all day, I don't give a fuck. Like, I just want to see something crazy happen, you know? Yeah, the atmosphere at the showboat is awesome. I love being there. I wish I could have been there for that. Yeah. It looks so much like so much fun. I do miss the carousel room, but that new little room is cool too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's not little. That thing is huge. That's a huge room. It seems I really I, I do like the I do like the aesthetic of the new room. Like it just looks like a big open warehouse kind of thing. But yeah, I miss the carousel room too. It just had such a vibe to it. Yeah, like as soon as the camera turned on, you were just like, Oh, that that place. Yeah. So, exactly. It, it, it has, yeah. That, has that look about it. It's a mini golf course now. Oh, is it? What when they're not running? Yeah, there, if you it's go just in there, go. they just took, took. Yeah, they took the wall down, so you can see like inside the carousel room, straight from like the pathway in the in the um the hotel, the showboat, uh-huh. and it's like a big mini golf and mini and like roller skating rink in there now. So wow, they're kind of turning the building into a big uh like family friendly place because they don't have gambling in there. Sure, in that one place, so they're just turning it into like a kid friendly, family friendly place. It's pretty cool. Right, where anybody. I'm not just a big, like I'm not a big gambler, so I think it's fun. Big nah, ass arcade and whatnot. Me neither. Like we went to we went to Vegas when I I mean I got married and I didn't fucking gamble in one place. It was like you went to Las Vegas and didn't gamble. I'm like, dude, I always lose at those things. I'd rather spend my money on a, like another drink and go to a thing or whatever. Like I'm not really interested. I went to Vegas one time and, and I gambled in one place and wound up winning almost two thousand dollars off a of twenty. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy! Yeah, I did it just to say I gambled in Vegas, and when I hit, I was like, "Wow!" And I just took it all out and funded my whole trip. So that was cool. That's that was so like back hot. in twenty seventeen, I think. That was awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. What what game were you playing? It's just a slot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to gamble on the card game, so I just put a twenty in a slot, hit the max bet, boom, it was there. Just like Cash straight out, away. I'm good. Yeah. That's crazy. It was, in the, it was in the pyramid looking hotel that we were in because all my yeah. friends wanted to go see uh, a Chris Angel stuff. And I was oh. like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I will be fine, sir. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually did go and see Chris Angel and he was fucking sick. 
I got to tell you, he had okay. like a live guitarist and bassist and shit like up on these big plinths and dancers. And one point he like disappeared and then dropped from directly above us and landed like this close to my wife's head, like whoosh, like straight into the <laughs> thing. He was so dope, man. <laughs> it was really nice. fun. We were like, <laughs> if we're going to Vegas, like because it was Starcast time and things like that, there was heaps of panels, you know, we went and saw Taz and Bret Hart and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then we, we were like, we've got to see all the fucking, you know, the the stereotypical Vegas stuff. We've got right. to a helicopter into a canyon. We've got to go see Chris Angel. We've got to go to the Cirque du Soleil and all that stuff. And we, we did, and it was all amazing. Like, Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, we were just, it was just us, and then we were like, if we're having a wicked time, we'll get married. And so it was like essentially like a week of like just me and my wife on a – you know, bucks heads just us, and then, and then fucking our wedding. It was, it was sick. It was really, <laughs> nice. really fun. Um, we even went to that. Uh, you know, Zach, what's his name? Zach Baggins, like haunted demon museum or whatever. You know, the ghost hunters oh, wow. guy. Yeah, and that was. I didn't know about that. That was some fucking haunted shit, eh? Like I'll tell you right now. I was like, yeah. they're demon in that box. There he is. <laughs> I like know it's true, and fucking. Uh, Post Malone fucked around with that the particular box. You can read this new article. He like touched it or opened it or something like that, and then straight up his plane crashed. Like fucking after that, oh, when he was in shit. that plane accident, it was after he fucked around with that demon box. So I'm just saying, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if I believe in any of this shit, but I think it's fun to fuck about with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. but don't fuck about with it. Just. Look at it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> and there's one point where you go through like this maze and it's all these like clowns, just a dark room, just nothing but clowns and laughing like clown dolls and mannequins and shit like that. But then there's also some in there that just move, like there's like midget clowns and shit like that that are obviously paid actors that are just amidst yeah. the clowns. And they're like not doing heaps, just enough to be like, did that fucking move? Like <laughs> it was fucked. I don't know if I'd like that. <laughs> no. I didn't like it. <laughs> but, yeah. but I, like, I think that's the whole point. But I still. like going to scary <laughs> places. I've got to show you this. We went to this place in Japan last time that was straight up the most fucking hectic thing I've ever gone through. Just It's like a walkthrough museum with all these fucked mannequins and, you know, weird show floats and, you know, old teddy bears and dolls and crazy stuff. So crazy. Um and the lady, like, let us in. She took our money. We never saw her again. We never saw another staff member again. We were just, like, alone in this fucking place. And then when we left, we had to wait for the bus just on the highway. And fucking I looked down the hill and there's just straight up, like, a TV on the ground, like, in the forest, like, half buried in the ground. Like, it's straight up from the ring. Like, And I almost took a photo of it. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't need that juju in my phone. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna fucking know about it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it. Um let's just do I, I think let's just quickly I don't think we need to break down all of the Kane show because it's you know, just yeah. lots of fun matches and stuff. How did you just feel about sort of the two main events? So the cage with Effie and Mansa, and then obviously the the end title gauntlet leading into all the fuckery at the end. Dude, Effie and Mansur was awesome. Yeah, it was really Some good. Some of the spots it? that they did in that, I was like, there's no way. Like the spot where they were up on the turnbuckle, Mance was, and Effie just runs and jumps and they go through the cage onto yeah. that barbed wire like uh -huh. construction thing. I thought Effie was injured for sure. Yeah. But he, he wasn't, looked, thank God. Looked but it looked so nasty. Yeah. I liked the um, how the front of the cage was down, you know. Like, yeah. I, th I thought that was like pretty cool. Um, it was cool for the camera work. For yeah, sure. exactly. Because when you're, unless you're going to paint the cage black, which makes it disappear on camera, it fucking um, it can be really hard to like see clearly, you know. Yeah, that was a big issue that I used to have back when they started doing like the Art of War games. Yeah, um, some of the you could barely see some of the spots because. They didn't really cut any holes in this cage for the cameras to stick through. Yeah. 
but yeah when they just put one section down and the cameras can film from there it's awesome yeah yeah so so yeah and it's still something that the the wrestlers can interact with and all that kind of yeah stuff. exactly yeah absolutely um i thought it was good i did get sort of i guess bored of all the Effie Mance clips that were constantly playing during TOS. <laughs> yeah. Like I get it. And it, it's cool. They they told a long rivalry for a long time. And they went at it too. Yeah, exactly. But it was just like every time it was down, it was back to that again. And I'm like, I get it. Yeah. It was selling tickets for a thing, but I'm like, show me something else. That said though, I do think it was better than like when they just put up a graphic and just play merch ads for like Yes. You know, 10 minutes. So at least it was something to interact with. I will say that. I agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was dope. And then we we get to that gauntlet match, which is, you know, a bunch of fun, different, you know, wrestlers coming through, different things. And the, the whole story of the show is that um, Joey Janela had got taken to the hospital and is he going to be in the match? Is he not going to be in the match? And what is going to happen? He doesn't. He doesn't appear in time to thing, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna put, we're gonna put Jimmy in, right?" Like that was the thing. Like we're gonna mm. put in again for the second time of the weekend. Jimmy's gonna get like an opportunity because he's Cardona's boy. Uh, yeah. Then, like I said, hit Nick Gage's music. He's gonna come out and he's gonna take Janella's spot. Okay, he's not Janella, but let's let this go. He then pulls out the win, and everyone's like, "New champion." But then he's attacked, and then they, I guess, they restart the match again. This is a lot to remember. <laughs> they then restart the match yeah. again for no reason, I guess, because Cardona's there. Then Jimmy wins, I think. Yeah, what? Yeah, Jimmy. <sighs> it's now I'm blanking on it. I I know a bunch of crazy stuff happened, but I don't remember the exact. But then though. I think I think that Jimmy wins it because it's like a restart, and then Jimmy's like the champion. But then Joey comes. And so then they restart the original match. Like they're like, oh, well, he was actually the one, not Nick Gage. So then they restart that. Then he wins. Then Cole comes to cash in, but then he gets knocked out. But then Mansa appears. And I guess Mansa's got like another cash in thing. Like I thought, oh, for sure, because Cole dropped it, Mansa's going to like grab his ring, cash it in on himself. And like use it. This may be me not understanding the mechanics of how these various things in GCW work, but I thought yeah, like so you know, much. you know, like if somebody gets the briefcase in WWE, I'm pretty sure it's even happened before. Like the money in the bank, thing, they could just cash it in, right? Like so, I thought, oh, he's gonna get a cash in, but then he had his own cash in thing that he'd won at some point at some time that he then cashed in, and then he cashes in on Joey. That's right, yeah. yeah. And then Joey had won it. Then he cashes it on Joey, and then he beats him. And then Mansa is the new world champion now. That's yes. right. I think I got it all right. I believe so. Total clusterfuck. There was a lot, a lot happening. I think it ended up with the right outcome. Like I think Mansa being the champion is really cool, and I'm glad that we got there. I think that's that's really cool. I I think it was a little bit sort of overbooked, but again, if I'm five beers deep in the fucking showboat, I don't give a fuck. I'm stoked to see Nick Gage. I'm stoked to see Joey Janela. I'm having a good time with it. I say overbooked in the best way possible. I love stuff like that. I love when things just keep happening and it's just like, what is going to happen next? Like, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Exactly. Well, I mean, it was definitely fun, but the the little logic things are the same. I'm like, okay, so Joey was supposed to come. Nick Gage, I guess he's Nick Gage. He just gets, and they're like, okay, well, he's going to take the spot. But then when Joey does come, that they go, oh, well, let's restart that match from where he was going to be in. Doesn't make really make sense. You know what I mean? It kind of throws your refs under the bus. And I felt just- bad because when Gage came out and won, I mean, I love Nick Gage, but when he won it, I was like, another Nick Gage. Title, title I mean, I, w- I would be so I could <laughs> never have too many Nick Gage title runs. Like he, he's looking better now. Like I would say, True. the last time I saw him, he was looking real rough, and he was looking explosive. He's looking fitter again. Like I think he's, he's back on track, and I really like to see it because let's face it, the entire company's built around that dude. Like yeah, when he's not running, when he's not working and doing his best work, then GCW is a little flat. But when he's fucking carrying it, it's it's really good. 
True. I would have by, by no means been upset that he, he he kept it, but I just wanted something new, and we got that with the Mance thing. Yeah, so. exactly right. And yeah. I, I think where Mance is at now, I think he's by far the the most well-developed and the most interesting character in that fed right now. Like, I'm so happy to say and, I love Heel Mance. I think he's so good. And he can do any, like, any type of wrestling, and he can talk. Mm-hmm. So... He's great. Absolutely. I think I think it's well and truly overdue for him, to be honest. So, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what's next. And uh, by the end, I mean, I was well and truly into it and interested to see what's next on like the next big event and see. I imagine he'll probably end up, like, defending against Effie at some point, which is really cool. Effie's another person that, like, you know, you can see in that title picture. I think for, for so long because, you know, Nick Gage held the belt for, like, so long – and then Ricky had it for so long. You know, there was so much of that 404 stuff. Uh, sorry, 440, whatever, 440. It's been so long. Yeah, I don't even know how to say it. Um, but there was a, <laughs> that was such a hot rivalry and it was going on for so long that the belt was tied up in that, that guys like Mansa and Effie and stuff like that couldn't even get a look in at it. You know, they could, they had no opportunity to be in that world picture. And so, yeah. so now that that is sort of freed up, it's going to be cool to see what they can do at the top of the card doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, they're going to go they're going to go at it again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Now that's good. That's cool, man. Well, as we're we're wrapping up now, what are you we were always throwing around music and stuff. I was telling you the other day that we just got tickets to go see Throne, which I'm really fucking pumped for. Their new album is dropping like very soon, right? Like Oh, yeah, is it? I, I know they only had some singles and yeah, it's, I can't remember the name of the one, the one that starts with like, I don't know. It's got a little bit of a hip hop feel to the very beginning. Yeah. I love is, that song. I'll tell you it is. Do, do, do. So if anybody doesn't know, throw T H R O W N it's on the verge, I think is that song. Uh, yeah. Excessive guild is the album. It comes out August 30th on, I've okay. got Spotify now and one, two, three, four, like five of the tracks you can access. Um, but yeah, the full the full album is still yet to come out. There's still another one, two, three, four, five, another six songs um, to come out. But yeah, it's sick. I just am like, as a you know, a new metal kid and stuff like that. I just love that a lot of these hardcore bands are just now like playing corn riffs and like yeah, <laughs> fucking yeah. everybody loves it. You know, like it's so dope. I don't- I don't know if you got a chance to check out that uh, Tala that I sent you. I did, uh, yeah. I really like that. I like messy sort of so stuff sick. like that too. I like them, and there's this band out there called Dealer. They're sick also. Dealer. Um, yeah. They're great. And for the past few days, I don't know why, but I've been going back and listening to a lot of, like, old Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, really? Like, their first, like, three albums. I don't know, like... I listen to them in high school. Sometimes I just like to go back and listen to something that reminds me of yeah. high school days, I guess. Yeah, sure. And I remember like, I'm just listening to like the city of evil album and then their self played album. And I'm like, man, these are some catchy songs. I yeah. kind of forgot. When I so. first heard them, I was like, this is everything I've ever wanted in a band. Like when I first heard them, I was like, this is like hair metal and hardcore and the all at once. Like I really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, and I've always loved it. It's uh a mix of styles that doesn't really get done enough. There was a band here in Australia from Adelaide called Wendy Icon. Back in the day, we did a few okay. shows with them, and they were like a hardcore band but with a hair metal singer, like a fucking mm. ah, type, type singer, and they were so good. Like I used to fucking love playing with those dudes and catching them. I wonder if you, you can catch them on Spotify. I wonder if their tracks are there. I used to yeah, love them. Interesting. I, I don't know if it holds up in the year of our Lord 2024, but <laughs> like, I mean, the recordings, but... I used to really enjoy them. Hang on, I'm going to have a look. Wendy Icon, let's have a look. Wendy Icon artist, okay. Oh. Hey, what is it What is it about Australian metalcore that just hits different? I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you, it's, you notice that now? I mean, we, we had like a real strong scene, you know, um, especially out of like South Australia and things like that, like bands like Parkway Drive and I Killed the Prom Queen and stuff. They they had like a really hot scene going for a while, and then yeah. Perth music we've always had cool stuff here because there's nothing else to do, like and because it is such a small scene, you really have to like sink or swim 
And because Australian culture is so fucking tall poppy syndrome, cut everybody down that isn't fucking doing anything good, you really got to have your shit together because it just doesn't fly. And so I think that breeds good bands because, like, shit bands can't exist. Like, you know, yeah. because everyone's <laughs> like, those guys are fucking shit and they'll tell you to your face. So, you know, you don't really have the opportunity. But we used to have some killer bands here in um in Perth from the ruins, fucking uh, miles away. Speaking of miles away, so in Perth City there is there was an old food court forever. It's underground in the Perth City and the main mall called Carillion Arcade. You'd go down and it'd have like, you know, Chinese restaurants and, you know, uh, Burger King, well, it's called Hungry Jack's here, you know, Red Rooster, like all these, just like, you know, it's where you go and there's tables and you eat food or whatever and then go on shopping. Well, that's been closed down for a while, but miles away are running a show there tonight. We've got tickets like in this basement unused food court. They're running a gig. It's going to be fucking awesome. sick. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really it's fun. On? Yeah, yeah, it was like nice. it sold out like immediately. Luckily, we got tickets, and it's going to be yeah, super fun to go down and see that. If you've never heard Miles Away before, they're really popular, like hardcore band. Um, okay, okay, I've got some. I have Wendy Icon here. I wonder if I can if I can play it for you. Hang on, let's check something out real quick. Let's see. No, just quick comment. I remember like back in the day, like getting all my music from the Pirate Bay, just downloading it from Torrents. And and there was this one dude I used to follow all the time that would upload stuff. Yeah. And he would put all the all the good info about all the bands in there. And I always remember every time it said like origin or location, Australia. I was like, this is about the rule. Like every time. <laughs> like, always did. like from I think the first band I remember ever ever experiencing that was with uh I think it was like Ocean's 8 Alaska. Yeah. This is back when like Metalcore was in its like Assing Alexandria days. Yeah, sure. And then that band came along and they were just like twice as heavy. They were saying really, really nasty, vulgar stuff. Yeah. Like all their shirts had stuff on it that like you couldn't wear around your family. I don't know why anyone would buy them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like just cancelable stuff just right on the front of a t-shirt for no reason. I loved it. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have, I have a special place in my heart for Australian metalcore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it was, it was cool. It was really, really fun to like be a part of those scenes and do that stuff. Now that my yeah. uh, my wrist is able to rotate a bit more, I've actually got to start fucking, you know, uh, playing my bass again to be ready for our show yeah. in October. All right, hang oh, on. Yeah. This is going to let me play something on YouTube. Here we go. Have a have a rip it. See, that's it. You get a taste of that. I didn't actually know when I tabbed off it would stop playing, but you get an idea that's like Motley Crue meets like hardcore. Could you hear it on your end? Nope. Oh, that's a real fucking shame for you, but the listeners love it. I didn't it. even know you were listening, and then you started talking about it, and I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm surprised you can't hear that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, no. I don't know the logic of, of how my setup works. Send it to me. Yeah, exactly. But I will send you, yeah. you the link. But, yeah, it's kind of like a fucking more jacked up Motley Crue uh, nice. kind of thing. So, yeah, that's, that's dope. Well, anyway, I need to go. I need to go and go to work. We're out here doing the grind. So, dude, I want to thank you for your time. It's been fun talking some GC dub. And then uh, we'll be meeting up again in a week or so to talk about whatever else is going on in wrestling. Sounds good to me. Have you watched the – you wouldn't have watched the Despy Invitational, would you? No. No. Okay. Then. That? That's uh, See, this is because you don't watch New Japan. Well, El Desperado from New Japan – won the best of the Super Juniors, and then the next day he put on his own Super show at Corricon Hall where it was just made up of people from all various feds that he loves. And so it's just like an absolute master class in him just booking all the shit he loves in like Japanese independent wrestling. And I'm not going to tell you any more because there's death matches and stuff on there. I don't want to tell you who's on the card because it's a Mystery Vortex card. I'm going to send you a link after this. Maybe that's okay. the next thing we talk about. I think you'll really enjoy it. Yeah, do that. Um, it might be the same thing show my my friend just sent me. He's real big into New Japan. He's always sending me stuff like that. Yeah. And I haven't got a chance to look at the link he sent me, so it could be the same thing, but I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, hot. Well, I'll send you two links then. I'll send you a link to that and uh, a link to the Despy show. 
So, yeah, cool. everybody out there, thanks for listening. Make sure you follow Alex online. Whereabouts? Uh, Legalized Ranch with two H's on Twitter. Or you can just add me on Facebook. I'm Alex Castillo. Or it'd be really awesome if you followed Vinyls and Violence on Instagram. There you go. I would like to start doing cool stuff on there again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Get to it. Absolutely. He's going to put in the work. If you've got any requests for him, uh, you know, mash up shirts with wrestlers and stuff that you want to see, let him know. Maybe we can make it happen. So that would be hot. Yeah, it'd be awesome. All right. No worries. So everybody out there, rate and subscribe, listen or die. Check out at Faces Feels Cast. Listen after this bit of music for all my listen and links. And remember, it's all about peace, love, and pro wrestling. Thanks for listening. Faces and Feels is a proud member of the Count Out Podcasting Network. It is created and hosted by me, Ray Houston, edited by myself and the amazing Ryan Neitze, and the show is available on all good podcast platforms, so please go rate and subscribe. You can follow the show everywhere on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. at Faces Feels Cast, and you can check out the Count Out Network and all our sister shows over there at Count Out Pod. If you'd like to book me for commentary, have an interview request, a topic suggestion, or you just want to say hi, you can email us at facesandfeels at gmail.com. With all that said, thanks for listening, and please support our friends and sponsors. Peace. My body is a roadmap of pain. Oh! Deathmatchworldwide.com, the official online merchandise store that is only for Deathmatch Wrestling. Featuring official t shirts from No Peace Underground, John Wayne Murdoch, Akira, Madman Pondo, Zona 23, Neil Diamond Cutter, G Raver, Schlack, Necro Butcher, and many more. If you are a deathmatch wrestler, promotion, manager, or platform, and are interested in joining the web store, send us an email to deathmatchworldwide at yahoo.com. Deathmatchworldwide.com for the violent view. This has been a Count Out Podcast. Countout provides a wide variety of bonus content that is right at your fingertips. On the Countout Patreon, our podcasts are creating bonus content exclusively for you, their listener. For only $5 a month, you can watch instant reactions to major shows, watch-alongs, early access to main feed podcasts, some fun goof and gag audio, plus shows from some of the podcasters' outside interests. It's the best way to experience all that the Countout Network has to offer. So head on down to patreon.com slash countout to take part in some of the best and most fun content wrestling has to offer. Again, that is patreon.com slash countout.